live from New York, it's theCUBE. Covering theCUBE, New York City 2018. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media and its ecosystem partners. Hello everyone, welcome to theCUBE here in New York City. We're live for CUBE NYC. This is our big data now, AI, now all things cloud. Nine years covering the beginning of Hadoop, now into cloud and data as the center of the value project. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. Our special guest is Rob Bearden, CEO of Hortonworks. Uh, CUBE alumni I've been on many times, so this great support of theCUBE. Uh, legend in open source, great to see you. It's great Thanks to be with, here, thanks. thanks. Yes, absolutely. So one of the things I wanted to talk to you about is that open source certainly has, has been a big part of the ethos. You're seeing it in all sectors, again, growing. Even in blockchain, didn't see open ethos is, is growing. The role of data now certainly center. You guys have been on this vision of open data, if you will, and making data and move and flight, maybe at rest, all these things are going on. Certainly the Hadoop world has changed. It's not just Hadoop and data lakes anymore. It's data, all things data is happening. This is core to your business. You guys have been banging this drum for a long time. Stock's at an all time high. Congratulations on, on the business performance. Um, so it's working. Things are working for you guys. I think, I think the model and the strategy are really coming together nicely. And, and to your point, the, uh, it, it's about all the data. It's about the entire life cycle of data and bringing all data under management through its entire life cycle and being able to give the, the enterprise accessibility to that data across each tier, on-prem, private cloud, and across all the multi-clouds. And that's really changed, uh, really in, in many uh, regards, the overall core architecture of Hadoop and how it needs to manage data and how it needs to interact with other data sources. And you know, our model and strategy is, has been about not going above the Hadoop stack, but actually going out to the edge and, and bringing data at, under management from the point of origination through its entire movement life cycle until it comes at rest and then have the ability to deploy and access that data across each tier and, and across uh, a, a multi-cloud environment and it's a hybrid architecture world now. You guys have been on this trend for a while and now it's kind of getting lift. Obviously you're seeing the impact of cloud, uh, impact AI, because the more faster compute you have, the faster you can process data, the faster data can be used machine learning. It's a nice flywheel. So again, that flywheel is being recognized. So I have to ask you, what has, what in your opinion, been the impact of cloud computing, specifically the Amazons and the Azures and now Google, where certainly AI is in the center of their power proposition. Now hybrid cloud is, validated with Amazon announcing RDS on-premise with v on VMware. That's the first ever Amazon ever on-premises activity. So this is clearly a validation of hybrid cloud. How has the cloud impacted the data space, in, if you will, because it used to be data warehouse, and cloud has changed that. What's your opinion? Well, what, what it's done is it's, it's given a, uh, an architectural extension to the enterprise of what their data architecture needs to be. And the real key is, it's now, it's, it's not about hybrid or cloud or on-prem, it's about having a data strategy overall. And how do I bring all of my different assets and, and, and bring a connected community together in real time? Because what the enterprise is trying to do is connect and have higher velocity and, vis and faster visibility between the enterprise, the product, their customer, and their supply chain. And to do that, they need to be able to aggregate data into the, mo into the best economic platform from the point of origination, maybe starting from the component on their product, a single component, and to be able to bring all that data together through its life cycle, aggregate it, and then deploy it on the most economically feasible tier, whether that's on-prem or a private cloud or across multiple public clouds. And our platforms with HDF, HDP, and data plane and complete that hybrid data architecture. Um, and, and, and by doing that, the real value is then the cloud AI and machine learning capabilities have the ability now to, to access all data across the enterprise, whether it be at their tier in the cloud or whether that be on-prem. And our, our, our strategy is around bringing that and, and being that fabric to bring all the interconnectivity irrespective of whether it sits on the edge in the cloud or somewhere in between, because the more accessibility AI has to data, the faster velocity of driving value back into that AI cycle. Yeah, people don't want to move data if they don't have to. 
Uh, and so, and we've been on this for a while, that, that this idea that you want to bring the cloud model to your data, not the data to, you, to the cloud always. And, and so how do you do that? How do you make it this kind of same, same environment? What role does Hortonworks play there? Well, the first thing we want to do is bring the data under management from and through its life cycle. That's where HDF goes to the edge, brings the data through its movement cycle, aggregates the streams. HDP is the, the data at rest platform that can sit on-prem in a, in a public cloud or a private cloud. And then data planes that fabric that, that, that ensures that we have connectivity to all types of data across all tiers and then serves as the common security and governance framework irrespective of which tier that is. And that's very, very important. And then that then gives the AI platforms the ability to, to bring AI onto a broad array of data that they can then have a higher and better impact on than just having an isolated AI impact on just a single tier IE data in the cloud. Well, that message seems to be resonating. We talked earlier about the, the stock price, but also, I mean, I think uh, Neil Bouchery and Frank Slootman popularized the metric of number of seven-figure deals. You guys are closing some big deals. And remember in the early days, Rob, of Hortonworks, people were like, how are these guys going to sell anything? It's all open source. And you're doing a lot of you know, million plus dollar deals. So it's resonating not only with the street, but also enterprises. Your, your thoughts? Yeah, last quarter, we, uh, I think the, the, the key is that I think the industry really understands, the investors understand, the enterprises really now understand the importance of hybrid mm -hmm. and hybrid cloud and that it's not going to be um, all about managing data lakes on-prem. All the data is not going to go and have this giant line of demarcation and now all reside in the cloud. That it has to, it has to coexist across each tier and our role is, is uh, to be that aggregation point. And you've seen the big, big cloud players now, all, at least the big three, all have on-prem strategies. Azure with Azure Stack, uh, uh, Google, we saw you know, Kubernetes on-prem, on and even AWS now, the last holdup, putting RDS on-prem, announced at VMworld. So they've all sort of recognized that, that not everything's going to go into the cloud. So that's got to be you know, good confirmation for you guys. It, it, it's great validation. What it also says to us, though, is we must have cloud-first architecture mm -hmm. and, and a cloud-first approach mm -hmm. with all of our tech. And the key to that is, uh, from our standpoint within our strategy, is to containerize everything. And uh, we had uh, some uh, an announcement earlier this week that was really a three-way announcement between us, Red Hat, and IBM. And the, the essence of that announcement is mm -hmm. Uh, we've adopted the uh, Kubernetes distro from Red Hat uh, to where we are containerizing all of our platforms with the Red Hat Kubernetes distribution. Uh, and what that does is then gives us the ability to optimize our platforms for OpenShift, the Red Hat Pass, and, and optimize then um, the deployment of that in the IBM private cloud. Right, and then naturally data plane will also then uh, give us the ability to extend those workloads, those very granular workloads up into the public clouds and we can even uh, leverage their native object stores. So, so that's an interesting love triangle, right? I mean, you, you and Red Hat are kind of birds of a feather with, with open source. IBM's always been a big uh, a proponent of open source, you know, funded Linux in, in the early days and then brings just a massive you know, channel and brand you know, to that world. Yes, and you know, and this this is really going to accelerate our movement into a cloud-first architecture mm -hmm. with with pure containerization. And the reason that's so important is it gives us that modularity mm -hmm. to move those applications and those workloads across whichever tier is most yeah. uh, appropriate architecturally for it to run and be deployed. You know, we said this on the cube many years ago, and continues to be this theme. Enterprises want um, really they want hardened solutions, but they don't mind experimenting. And Stu Miniman and I were always talking about and comparing. OpenStack ecosystem to what's happened in the Hadoop ecosystem. There's some pockets of relevance, and you, it's a lot of work to build your own, and OpenStack has a great solution for certain uh, use cases, now mostly on the infrastructure side. Um, but when cloud came in and changed the game, because you saw things like Kubernetes, I mean, we're here at the Hadoop show that started with Hadoop, now it's AI. The word Kubernetes is being talked about. You mentioned hybrid cloud. These aren't words that were spoken at an event like this. So the IT problem 
in multi-cloud has always been a storage issue. So you do some storage work, you got to store the data somewhere, but now when you talk about Kubernetes, you're talking about orchestration around workloads, right. the role of data in workloads. This is what enterprise IT actually cares about right now. This okay. is like not like not a small little thing. It's a big deal because data is not only in the workloads, they're using instrumentation with containers, with service meshes around the corner. You're starting to see policy. This is hardcore B2B enterprise th th features. Th this is where we're, what we're seeing is a massive transformational shift of how the IT architecture is going to look for the next 20 years, right? The, 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 the IT world has been horribly constrained from this very highly configured, very procedural based applications. And now they want to create you know, high velocity engagement between the enterprise, their product, their customer and their supply chain. They, they were so constrained with this, these very procedural based applications mm -hmm. and containerization gives the ability now to create that velocity and to move those workloads and those interactions between that, that four pillars. Now let's talk about the edge, because the pendulum is clearly swinging sort of back to, to some decentralization going on. So, and, and the edge is to us is a data play. We talk about it all the time. What are your thoughts on the edge? Where does Hortonworks fit? What, what's, your, what's your vision of the data model and how that evolves? You know, that, that, that goes back, you know, the insight to that would be, you know, our strategy and what we did and, and had the, the great fortune, quite frankly, of having the uh, ability to uh, merge on Yara and Hortonworks back in 2015. And that we wanted, and the whole goal of that, besides working with the, with the great team uh, Joe Witt had built, is being able to get to the edge. And what we wanted to have the ability to do was to operate you know, on, on every sensor, on every device at the edge for the customer so that they can bring the data under management, whatever that may be, um, through its entire life cycle. So from point of origination, through its movement until it comes at rest, because our, our, our belief is that if we can bring enough intelligence and, and faster insights as that data is being generated and as events or conditions are happening, moving or changing, before it ever comes to rest and we can process and take prescriptive action, leveraging AI and machine learning, as it's in its life cycle, we can dramatically decrease the amount of data we have to bring to rest. We can just bring the providence, the metadata, to rest and have that insight. And, and we try to get to these high velocity, real time insights, um, starting with the, the data on the edge. And that's why we think it's so important to, to manage the entire life cycle. And then, but, but what's even more important is then put that data uh, onto whatever tier. That may be bring it back to rest in a data lake on-prem, right? To, to aggregate with other like data structures or it may be take it into cold storage on a native object store in a, in a cloud with, that, that has the lowest cost of, of storage structure or, 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 for a particular time. Or take an action on the edge and leave it there. Yeah. You yeah. guys are definitely thinking about the edge in a, in a big way, that's pretty obvious. But what I want to get your thoughts on is an emerging area we're watching, and I'll, I'll call it, for lack of a better description, programmable data. And you mentioned data architectures being set up, for probably set a 10, 20 year uh, run for enterprises as they set up their data architecture with the cloud architects. Making data programmable is kind of a DevOps concept, right? Like, mm -hmm. And this is something that you guys have thought about with the data playing. What's your reaction to this notion of making data programmable? Because when you start talking about Kubernetes, you're going to have stateful applications, stateless applications. You have new dynamics, I call it API 2.0 happening. A whole new infrastructure happening. Data has to be programmable, there's going to be policy around it. The role of data is certainly changing rather than storing it somewhere. Right. What's your view of programmable data, making it programmable? Well, you've got to be able to, 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 to truly pro have programmable data. You have to be, you, you can't have uh, slices of accessibility or window. You, you have to understand the lineage of that entire data and the context of that data through its entire life cycle. That's, that's step and point number one. Point number two is you have to be able to have that containerized so that you can take uh, the module of data that you want to take prescriptive action against or, or create action against a condition and to be able to do that in, in granular bites or chunks, right? 
Um, and then you've got to have accessibility to all of the other contextual data, which means whether that's as it's in motion, yeah. as it's at rest, or as it's contextual cousin, if you will, <laughs> that sits up in, a, in an object store on another tier in a public cloud, right? And, but what's important is that you, you have to be able to control the and understand the entire lineage of that. And, and therefore, that's where you know, our second step in this is data plane and having the ability to have a full security model through that entire architectural chain, as well as the entire governance and lineage leveraging, uh, leveraging Atlas uh, through, through data plane. Um, and that then gives you the ability to take these very prescriptive actions that are, that are driven through AI and machine learning insights. And it makes you very agile, love it. I mean, the ethos of open source and DevOps is literally being applied to everything. We're seeing it at the network layer, you're seeing it at the data layer, you're starting to see this concept of dev and ops being applied in a big way. The, the next, you know, when, you know we, in previous years we've talked about you know, what we're trying to accomplish. And we started Hortonworks, it was about changing the data architecture for the next 20 years and how data was going to be managed. Now, and that's had, to your earlier point we opened up the show, that's had twists and turns. Hadoop's evolved. The nature and velocity of data has evolved in the last five, six, seven, eight years. You know, it's about going to the edge. It's about leveraging the cloud. And you know, we're very excited yeah. about where we're positioned as this massive transformation's happening. And what we're seeing is the iteration of change is happening yeah. at an incredibly fast yeah. pace, even much more so than it was two, three years ago. Yeah, yeah the clock speed's definitely up there. Data is working, people putting it to work. Important well, works. They're able to get more value faster because of it. Right? AI is great. The, the, the data economy is here and now, and the, and the enterprise understands it. And so they want to now move yeah. aggressively yeah. to change and transform their business model to take advantage of what their data is giving them the ability to do. Yeah, that's great. They always want the value, they want it fast, and anything gets in the way, they'll, they'll move, remove the blockers, as, as we say. All right, this is the cube here, Rob Beard, CEO of Hortonworks, uh, giving us a vision, but also an update on the company. Data at the center of the value proposition. This is about AI, it's about big data, it's about the cloud. This is the cube bringing you the cube data here in New York City, cube NYC, that's the hashtag. Check us out on Twitter. Stay with us for live coverage all day today and tomorrow here in New York City. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>